Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Anitsu, and you're listening to the DigiTalks podcast, the show that covers various topics from news to meta developments and everything in between for the fine folks who love the Digimon trading card game. Just as a quick reminder, I do stream this live over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu, and it's also uploaded as a video under the YouTube channel of Zenitsu, on top of being on various podcasting platforms like Spotify for your viewing and listening pleasure. Please, if you want to support the podcast, uh, make sure to uh, like, follow, subscribe, ring that noti bell, do whatever you need to do, write a review on the respective platform that you're listening on. It really does help support the podcast. So today I am back with my special guest, Risu the Squirrel, and we're going to be talking about set design. Well, more so what our ideal set is and what does it look like. This could be either from a flavor standpoint or an actual game design standpoint. So that leads us to the question of the week. What is your favorite set? My favorite set? Probably BT7. Uh, I am a nerd for Season 4, and BT7 is looking out to be the best Season 4 set. So, what about that? Um, and then, like, I don't know. Like, you, like That question is, like, a two-part question, right? It's like, what, what kind of, like, Digimon? Because like, it's still a franchise, right? So, like, everyone's going to be like, well, Jessmon's my favorite, so the Jessmon starter deck's my favorite thing ever. Um... There's a lot of like like self personal gain there, and then there's like the game design aspect of like what was the set trying to do? Did they accomplish that? Um, what it what makes a well designed set going like a, having a through line through the set, and does that translate into the meta? Or are you also like this is the meta of that set? Was that does that make it? Does that you include that when you're thinking what the best set was? I mean, it's just kind of general. If you want to just break it up into two, what was your most favorite flavor and what was your favorite design? Uh, seven was my favorite flavor, just because season four is my favorite. But, like, I don't know. Like, for me, the best set was probably... Uh, I want to I wanna say either set four and set nine. And I know a lot of people are going to be really upset with set nine, but like when you think about how either of those sets were introduced, it was like set four was introduced, right? And set four introduced Digiburst and the design platform of that set was like, all right, every color is going to get a Digiburst card at level five. It's going to be a mechanic that everyone wants to be playing around. And that like, for the most part, they succeeded. Like when I think of back at BT4, every deck was using the new mechanic and every deck was having fun with it. I think black might have been the only color. They had Ga- uh, Golmon, uh, I think his name was. He was the Digiburst for two. And then you would gain 2k DP for, until the end of your opponent's turn, which was really rare back then. Uh, Go- Golmon. It, it was Go- Go- Gogmon. Go- Go- Gogmon. It was, it was the level five for Blastmon. Yeah, Gogmon. Yeah, and then, like, so, like when, like, when you look back at that set, like, every color had, like, just a relevant, like, through line f- that attached itself to that set. So, you know, yellow, yellow. Was, but, yellow had War Growl. Um, War Growl wasn't too bad as a Digiburst card, but then on top of that, they they kind of cheated and also had Rise, because Rise kind of doubled up as red and yellow. Yeah, they and... also did have a Digiburst rookie. Oh, no. Yeah, no, they didn't. They didn't have a Digiburst rookie because the Geo line in that set uh, was interacting with Tamers. So, oh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was Harrismon in BT7 that you actually got the Digiburst rookie, but by then it was already too late and Digiburst was kind of mid. Yeah, they kind of they, they kind of lost the, the, the bit of with... Uh... Did you burst a long time ago? But I mean, the yellow was still good. Like, in if you, if you want to like transition into meta, like yellow was still powerful. I think yellow was probably the best deck coming out of that format. Like war, everyone still remembers war Greymon with Andrew Mo- Andrew Woman level five as the inheritables, just kind of cheating out every rookie you could. And yeah. Then, uh, like you got to the thing about war Gra- Greymon was like you could set up your own security to be at three, so then you could trigger your own Andrew Woman, which was huge um but yeah like every like 
black i think it was this purple still had oh no purple didn't get the black war ground one yet that's like the most no, those famous. were promos yeah oh okay well purple purple went into the the, the dan devi stuff which was amusing but wasn't good but like i don't think we've ever had it like so uh, maybe you should take over but like it's in my eyes when you come out with a set and you want to introduce like every set should be like its own like in my perfect world like every set should just come out and have like the theme of the set and like when i say theme i mean more like the mechanics of the set so like bt7 was everyone gets a hybrid everyone gets the, the this hybrid mechanic to work with and you almost got there but then black didn't they didn't finish it with black um for whatever reason yeah they and did a then, lot of half steps yeah and so like and but like having it like be an, a thing to introduce to every color and every deck you're trying to push be somewhat relevant and like that that's why i think like bt9 was so good right like every color in bt9 got introduced to the x antibody mechanic and every bt9 deck for the most part that was pushed for that mechanic was seen and had relevance the only one that struggled was yellow and that's because they tried to they tried to split like its super rare slot with magnamon x and i mean like you know we're 13 like 15 sets later now that megamon x is the the digimon himself is a problem but that's a, a different amusing topic yeah, so just kind of touching on mine really quickly. Uh, the best design set, I will have to say hands down, is probably BT13. Uh, I think kind of like the same points that you were hitting on, everything that they wanted in terms of mechanics and flavor just matched in that set. That set to me was just such a big home run because it really felt like they understood the power dynamics of the game they mm -hmm. even though there were a couple things that were a little on the extra push side uh it didn't feel like everything was like oh this is obviously the clear winner because you had all of the royal knights supporting all of the royal knights stuff on top of mm -hmm. all of their native base decks as well to their best of their abilities uh some of mm -hmm. them didn't exactly match up uh, I'm looking at yeah. you, uh, Dynasmon and Lord Nightmon, but that's okay. Oh, uh, and then on top of that, you had just about almost a burst mode in almost every single color. Um, granted, right. red and yellow are cheating because they shared one, but uh, you had a burst mode, even though Rave was pretty bad and uh, Plants mm, and Fairies, Rose. yeah, with yeah. Rose already had better cards. Uh, it just gave budget alternatives like oh i can't build lord knight cool i'll just build rosemon instead and it's doing something similar but also something different rose is a little bit more control heavy where mm -hmm. bloom is a little bit more aggro heavy so you have your different flavors that you could play with it was a good update set to update a whole bunch of decks so that's that's one of my favorite sets is bt13 in terms of mechanics and design in terms of mm -hmm. actual flavor mm, um i'm i'm gonna be a little on the bias side and i'm gonna say animal coliseum um Ooh. yeah Ooh. that's uh i know that's also a pretty divisive set considering we got some like actually broken stuff coming out of it and there was yeah. a lot of damage done by that set single-handedly uh but flavor wise I I love Leomon. I love all the beast type Digimon. I love Nature Spirits as a concept. It had Gururmon, which is one of my favorite Digimons because I'm a basic person like that. Oh, uh, I like Gururmon too, man. That was really good. Oh, and then we finally got Dawn and Dusk. I think that yes, was something people were asking was, for from like day one. That was that was a big one. We actually got um, Dawn and Dusk representation. We got more Olympus Twelve representation. It was just. To me, flavor-wise, it was just such a home run. Uh, it just was unfortunate what actually played out in the cards that were designed in there. Uh, but that is a completely different topic. Uh, so yeah. we actually do have, uh, shifting focus a little bit to the meta report, we do have some metadata to look at because we got a UK event. Yeah, UK. Uh, yeah, organized yeah, Play UK, yeah. had an Ultimate Cup that happened this past weekend. And mm -hmm. we actually have the breakdown for it. So it was, you said, what, it was 100, or no, it was uh, 118. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
118 players, full seven rounds. Uh, do you know if there was actually like an undefeated or did they do the whole let's continue through the end and then somebody actually might not be 100% the winner? Yeah, no, I didn't actually like we didn't actually get that data when we were inputting it for eggmanevents.com. I know uh, 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 Agito Swiftly, one of the YouTubers, and Kenta Elixir, I think they both got to commentate that event. I wasn't keeping too, my tabs too, too closely onto that event. It was just kind of... Uh, we got the data afterwards, and we just, you know, did our reporting thing, or, or just, like, our give, provide everyone the links kind of bit. Because, like, they, they didn't use Limitless this time. I think there's just a big shift to just using a TCG Plus now. So, like, uh, getting those exact numbers isn't as easy anymore. Yeah, that might have been a Bandai thing. Bandai's been trying to crack down a lot. I think it's because they just have so much TCG stuff going on. They really mm -hmm. just want to everyone to be on the same page on using their stuff so they could try, emphasis on try, to improve it. Mm -hmm. um, and that way they can see and have access to all that data themselves uh, for whatever reason they're going to be doing. So, Yeah, I don't um, uh... Eh. <laughs> yeah i just i just wish that the the like you could do that and like still make the data publicly available like there doesn't need to be like a, a this like glass wall or a fog wall between the public and the data like everybody wants to know it's the most interesting part of the game is getting to see like who did well and what's doing well and like celebrating that in different ways or getting to talk about it like you know, talking about this event, like, Bird Up and Machine Drummond and Jessmon top, and, like, those are big, those are big fan-favorite decks right now that, like, get a lot of attention. A lot of people want to see, like, oh, well, what did they do? Um, and then the, the deck that won the whole thing was Imperial, which is one of the fan-favorite decks, right? Like, everybody, so many Season 2 uh, enjoyers out there that just love their dragon fighting mode. Yeah, and this event, more specifically compared to a lot of the other events that we've had for BT16, which basically is now over, uh, I think mm -hmm. maybe if we're lucky, we'll still get some petering of the rest of the BT16 events that we didn't get the data for. I'm not holding my breath on that, and it doesn't seem like it's going to matter that much, uh, considering EX6 is right around the corner. But we had how many different decks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We had nine different decks top. And as mm -hmm. far as the archetype breakdown, we had four Numimon, three Lugamon, two Mirage, two Magnamon X. This is the blue side. Uh, mm -hmm. One Imperial, one Phoenix, one Machine Dramon, one Yellow Vaccine, which is also just Magnamon X, just the yellow side. And then one Jessmon. So that's a pretty decent spread. A lot of it is kind of just what you would expect out of, well, what this format is. It does contain the five decks that I consider to be what actually is this meta, um, which no shocker there because, you know, they're all there and that's what the meta is. <laughs> um, and then... Yeah. There is something to note though. Like he, I don't know how I, I should have asked uh the, the Kenta Ken Elixir and Agito a little more about this or pressed them more about this, but like we know that Europe had a lot of issues uh getting BT sixteen even even at their locals or in getting product, period. Like I think a previous event was supposed to be BT sixteen but then ended or yeah, it was supposed to be BT sixteen, but was ended up being BT fifteen because they just didn't have the product that came late or was delayed or whatever. So like, I know they're just recently getting their hands on product, and I, it makes me wonder, like, how hard was it for decks to get things like a playset of Magnumon X? I mean, like, you look at you look at how Numenmon did this tournament versus other tournaments, and that pie chart is so much smaller. But then you still see like some cards that are like some decks that are like are pretty low investment. Like they don't need a lot of the new stuff to work. Like notably the Jessmon list, I think, wasn't even running Magnumon X. Um, it was just running good old it was just good old Jessmon. There was nothing new about it. It was just a good number of ratios and uh sister mons. I think the most the, the the key standout cards they were using was they actually committed to using uh an awaken mode of one of the Blanc awaken modes. Yeah, the recovery um, is pretty good and the fact that you could digivolve on top of your blocks mm -hmm. 
uh, just to get that extra card draw actually could make a huge difference. Uh, but the fact that it also recycles your Jessmon stuff, which is pretty good, uh, also is why I like Sistermon Blanc Awaken more than CL Awaken. Because CL Awaken is just more removal. The deck really didn't need that at all. Yeah, absolutely not. So, um. yeah, outside of that, it is just very standard Jessmon. It's using Genku X and Jess X as, like, the, the main mm -hmm. level sixes to facilitate uh, Jessmon GX, and they're not using the BT8 Magnemon for the unsuspend because they, I guess they don't feel like they need to try to do that. The deck already has consistency issues, so it makes sense why they wouldn't mm -hmm. want to try to do that. The big talk of the town was uh, making, seeing if uh, incorporating Magnemon X too, right? Because GX allows you to slot it right under, get the immunity, and then you get to play... You know, I just did five checks and spawned all these sister mons, and now my my boss monster is immune to all your effects. Good luck uh, yeah. next turn. I mean, um, Genku is kind of fulfilling that same type of role, uh, where it mm -hmm. is just the card that's giving your Digimon as many protections, and obviously between your uh, decoy sister mon and some other stuff, you're just trying to make your GX as safe as possible. But yeah, maybe they did just have a hard time uh, having the... Magnemon X from BT16 and they just felt comfortable saying hey I know this theoretically considering it's still trying to do the whole like attack into the opponent's Digimon with good DP numbers thing uh, mm -hmm. like yeah because they had a they had a focus on playing the level 5 from the starter or yeah the starter deck that lets you attack when Digivolving you may also attack on suspended Digimon they didn't even bother playing the I mean they they did bother they, they had the original BT6 one the one that got ended up getting limited has the inheritable uh, when attacking if you have a sister on suspend that that one was banned for or limited to one for so long. Yeah, and now it's, it's funny to limited. see. Yeah, now, now we have the freedom to pull a four, but the the deck that the Jessmon that's done the best in a in a long a long minute has is just has left it at one with preference over the uh, being able to attack on suspend, which you know, funny enough, just lets you attack into Magnemon X. Or the the one problematic Numemon card that you might need. There's no even like there's no even like anti Numemon tech in here other than like the Chimeramon is probably a good answer for Numemon uh, just in general. But I wouldn't call that a tech because they're always just Mon just kind of inherently runs Chimeramon as is. Yeah, it just seems like it's just let me get into GX, hope my protections keep it alive, and then just try to hit you hard. Yeah, which. I can't I can't blame him for that. It's just it's just funny to see just it's just funny to see it do do well without any of the things that people in thought would cause the deck to to overperform. Oh, uh, the 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 digi bubble the digi bubble was also something that stood out to me. They're playing the Sha Shakutmon from like way back in the day when uh, yeah. Riding the Lordmon first came out. Just if it, when attacking, if you're level seven, gain a memory. Yeah, it combos very nicely with Blitz because it effectively makes your GX cost one less. So mm -hmm. I can see why. Because like if you think about it, why are you wasting your time running draw eggs when you're just basically building one stack and raising anyway? And if you're mm -hmm. not actually constantly drawing off of your draws, there's no real reason to run a draw egg. So they're just yeah, like, was, uh... the memory gain could help them make more efficient play lines when they're doing their big Unga Bunga combo turn. Absolutely. No, I, I agree with that. And then, uh, I mean, yeah, like, I, ideally you only get one card in Jessmon out of a draw egg. So, like, if that one card really was the thing that, like, would make or break your game, like, uh, you're probably losing that game as is. Um, it's just the it's just sad to see like I mean like the the sister months and the the sister months being white just hurts this deck a lot kind of in the same way that um, how like hybrid decks can't run trainings so they they also suffer in this new world we find ourselves in um, yeah I'm, I I won't be surprised if we ever if going forward we see like sister months like that actually have a color if they just make them red or something red white sister months yeah I could see it. Yeah, and then as far as some of the other standout decks, uh, Machine German is slowly finding some success. Uh, this mm. one actually is on 8 Ukamon, and then they actually spiced it up, and they included a fifth egg, which is the Red Koromon. Uh, yep. And then they're also on Raremon, because it's also treated as a cyborg, and they're on one Mercurymon, so like... 
just more cycling and then just a hybrid for finish, I guess. Um, giving something blocker is nice, but you already have lots of ways to be able to give your Digimon blocker anyway. And it is basically playing like the Machine Germon that topped in the last event, where I'm just going to basically Uko value and then slam down the EX1 Machine Germon, try to go into Chaos Germon and then Chaos X and hope that's good enough to lock you out of the game because you do have redirects on top of the ability to block. Um, yep. which is nice, and you have a slew of different inheritables to kind of tech for whatever you feel like. Uh, a lot of these just look like it's going for DP. Like, there's there's a lot of DP increases just because you have to win the DP wars if you're going to be a defensive deck. Or if you're not a defensive deck, you need to win the DP wars to make sure you get over the opponent's wall. Otherwise, none of these, like, the rest of these just don't matter. Yeah. No, it's it's fun to see. Like it's fun to like the the one the one level five that stood out to me with the what, that I found amusing was uh the the starter deck five Mega Dramon is back. I don't know something about that. Like for a while, the the Metal Greymon from EX four had completely uh, replaced that card. Like it essentially was a power crap version of the card since Metal Greymon also has just blocker innately on top of him, so it was just a better card. But the C another card, another blocker card, which I feel like they could have ran. Not to like nitpick, I guess, but like they could have ran one of the EX1 machines that give. Yeah, Andromon. Andromon gives. They could have done Andromon, but he might be too. Ex maybe they valued the the seven hard play. Maybe the Andromon's a little more expensive. I don't have the the no, play he's seven memorized. as well. Interesting. So yeah, he's seven as well. Literally the same thing. It's just uh, Megadramon is asking specifically for nothing. And Andromon is asking for it to be uh, machine. Right. But, I mean, you're never getting that in Hairball unless you're a machine, right? So. Right. Which is where it goes, like, eh, I don't know. That, that, that would be my only nitpick. Everything else is, like, super interesting. Like, the, 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 the thing it's always worth looking at is, like, where are they putting two ofs for their level fives? They chose Mega Dramon from uh, BT9, which uh, is the tamer control. Metal Greymon from BT8, which allows you to attack unsuspended, and then Mega Dramon from BT15, which inheritable D Digivolve 1. Kind of sick, kind of busted, especially if you pair it with the Metal Mamemon. Uh, yeah, you start being delete, able to clear so much. Yeah, I mean, even the Metal Mamemon being able to delete play cost 5 or less is good because of all of the level 5 Ace Digimon that decks are running, so it's, it's a, mm -hmm. still a solid card for removal picks. Uh, but yeah, everything, and then they're on Digimon Emperor and Ty. Ty is good for card draw and uh, extra DP. And then Digimon Emperors to try to shut down the opponent's Ukamon play. So mm -hmm. even though they're not running the uh, Marvin Jackson for the Mega Dramon, uh, they, yep. I mean, you still have Analog Man to basically pick up the slack. Yeah, just abandoning the whole like bottom end, and just going back to like the OG EX one strat of just hard playing fives and getting draws until you actually can play stuff. The the Digimon Emperor is also like a really big include, right? Because that's just a lot of people like promoting, and uh, that that Digimon Emperor is going to slow people down, draw you an extra card, which. The draw value in Machine Dramon is really important, just because like you need to actually somehow get that collection of five machines plus a ideally five machines plus the uh, Machine Dramon themselves. Yeah, and that's um, where the Ukamon low end just comes in because it's like, yeah, I am just a value engine. You kill me, I still get to draw and discard. If I just want to sit here and do nothing. I get even more value as long as I have all of my other Ukamons, and then they start compounding. So, like, you could end up with a turn where it's just like, I'm going to raise, gain three memory, then trigger analog, gain a fourth, and then that makes hard-dropping Machine Dramon way more palatable. Yeah, and then just deleting, just being able to, on deletion, trash one. Off the Digibubble, you get to uh, trash one level five and draw two. It's like near perfect what machine Dramon wants to be doing a lot of the time too yeah and i think machine Dramon, in part of its, its success is due to ex1 having the all turns ability to just have its dp not be reduced period so decks like very Numimon, relevant right now yes decks mm -hmm. like numimon where its main removal type is dp reduction yep this basically 
gets around all of it, which really hinders what Numemon is even capable of. So Numemon has to try to figure out an alternative way to remove the Digimon, which a lot of decks aren't necessarily doing outside of like, oh, I could try to force a Blast Ace play or like force them to attack and try to put them at a disadvantage. But the way Machine Dramon kind of works, he just doesn't care. But I do think like Machine Dramon, this type of a build, in the top five other meta decks, or like looking at the top five meta decks right now, mm -hmm. he does have some pretty bad matchups, like some excruciatingly bad matchups. You probably end up seeing um, Imperial, and Imperial probably just rips this deck a new one because it's removing the. Oh, it's, it's it's so bad. It's yeah. So bad. Uh, then oh my you God. get some. Yeah, and then you get something like uh, Mega Gargamon, where it's just like, oh, I can't be redirected which includes analog man so like you start to see like where matchups actually start mattering when it comes to how good you are into the top five decks and realistically you obviously want to try to be good into all of them that's not going to happen mm -hmm. so i would say if you're comfortable with at least two to three of the top five decks in terms of your matchup mm -hmm. spread you're probably in an okay position to be meta playable on the fringe side. It's not going to do as well as the top five, but it could still get you there based on matchups and a little bit of uh, good RNG. Uh, and speaking of top that's, five, I think um, that's something unique to Digimon too. Just being able to just there's just a good smorgasbord of of decks that can top, and that's been the case for a while now. Except for this set is the the inklings of something tier zero or something it's, uh, potentially it's too strong not, yeah it's definitely not mm -hmm. tier zero it's it's a solid like looking at the data it's a solid tier one format where mm -hmm. it kind of yeah. reminds me of black war graymon's meta in a way where it's just like you had grandis and black war graymon and those were the two big decks and the rest of the format if you could not deal with those two decks you just were not viable and it's mm -hmm. kind of in the similar spot where you have Magnamon X as the number two deck, and you have Numemon as the number one deck. But Numemon's only number one because Magnamon is what's constricting the format, where in Black War Greymon, it was Black War Greymon, and Grandis was just the only real out to it. So yeah. it's just a little bit reverse this time, which, because it's reverse, opens it up a tiny bit more. Mm-hmm. And now we got birds. Birds yeah. did really well again too. Yeah, so birds is another deck that a lot of people like and it is doing well. Um and this one is actually running Valkyrie Mon Ace as a big surprise card because some people are just like, yeah, I'm just gonna run Phoenix and Phoenix X and that's gonna be it. And we're gonna call it a day. But Valkyrie Ace is just that strong of a card. Like I honestly believe like having Valkyrie Ace Ukamon and um magnamon x anybody if you're a deck that could run literally one of those three cards you're immediately better than the rest of the competition like it's it's just the power gap is that big between those cards and the decks that could use them versus some other decks that can't I, I would check that statement by saying if you're a deck that can feasibly run all eight ukamon puts you in a good advantage because i don't necessarily think just like running three of the BT-16 one, like, is enough to push the deck over the top. Like, we see Lugamon is probably one of the few decks that is trying to tr try to play Ukamon at BT-16, um, just, like, at a small numbers, and we're not even seeing Lugamon perform this tournament, but I think some of them didn't even run Ukamon. They chose to, like, not even play it, or uh, just play a traditional rookie count. Yeah, that might have been um, lack of access, um, but the reason why a lot of decks, Lukamon specifically, is trying to run a little bit of Ukamon is because of Dino Beemon. Because having one set Mon is just mm -hmm. not good enough. Uh, the likelihood of you seeing that and actually and it seeing Or seeing it, both of your... Either seeing that or both of your Dino Bees, because Dino Bee can play Dino Bee. That, that, that one's always funny to me. Yeah, so it, it is a little bit limiting in terms of mm -hmm. uh, what Dino Bee can grab. And Ukamon just helps widen it. And because, again, you're just mostly a single stack deck anyway, you don't actually care what happens to that Ukamon. You could swing, get that free check, or you're just using it as a search and reset. Like, mm -hmm. it's still just value. So the thing, the thing about Valkyrie Mon and Phoenix Mon is though, is like one of the 
like best like all right so like obviously if you're trying to play around aces you're when attacking your facts or you're trying to remove the digimon before you have to fully commit to an attack somehow or like transition into counter timing a lot of the phoenix mon combos just involve establishing another level five after being deleted so as long as you're not playing against blue specifically or or some kind of like crazy d digimon strategy um you're just gonna end up on another biomon and, and we're not even playing the uh we're not even playing the bt13 biomon that just instantly warps into a garudamon so but no, there's a lot of they're the... not dedicated on christy combo they're more slower paced with sora yeah but like they can instantly like play that uh, a garudamon somehow through their effects after being deleted and then immediately go into counter timing into valkyrie mon ace which is kind of nuts the fact the fact that they can do that is kind of busted um and then you know saber drawn is just a good card there's just like oh they're just peppered so many one-ups into this deck which is kind of wild to me uh yeah. one of the Agulamons. their hmm. ratios are also a little on the skimpy side because they're only running nine they're running literally nine of every level except for level two obviously but that's kind of crazy so yeah. they back it up with a lot of search though they got four trainings four boosts so yeah they then the Biomon search so it it works mm -hmm. out I think and it's fine. Probably, yeah. No, it's it's good. It's interesting w w that this person took it into a different direction. Like they're playing the BT11 uh, Garudamon that just has inheritable blocker, but then has in on deletion uh, inheritable. Play one red tamer, four cost or less, which is loop. We're just fully committed to the Sora. Just like that's our only tamer, which is interesting. I wonder, I wonder what the, how this deck runs when you are struggling to find that Sora. Funny enough. Yeah, I have no idea. But uh, talking about the struggles on finding your parts and pieces, the last deck we're going to be talking about uh, is going to be the winner, which was, as you said, Imperial. And this mm -hmm. is a very, very interesting Imperialist. Uh, yeah. The fact that they're running blue card at all really is like, what are they on? Like, I'm not saying it it's, like, a good thing or a bad thing. It's just, it's something that... Stands you, out. Yeah, yeah, it stands out as something you would not expect. Like, Omnimon, fine. You're part blue, blitz Omni for game, whatever. Uh, it's a but, classic. Yeah, but they were running two starter deck nine dragon modes, which ruins partition. So it there's, like, some anti-synergy there that I don't exactly understand, especially when you have uh, BT-16 dragon mode, which basically is a trap in of himself, and it really forces your opponent to either play around the fact that you could have fighter mode to just ruin their play, or mm -hmm. you just literally leave it alone and don't fall into it, which means you're playing slower and less optimally. So, like, the fact that they're only running one of that dragon mode, BT-16, is, is a little bit confusing, especially since they do actually have the four partition uh, piles. Yeah. So, it's like... I don't well, the four partition Pyledra is just like the best Pyledramon, like hands down, no matter what, right? Oh, like, there is yeah. no world where that Pyledramon isn't just ran at four, regardless of what your uh, partition partition uh, strategy is. I will say though, the Imperial Mon Dragon Mode from the starter deck uh, nine that he's running at two, kind of goes hard with the uh, XV Mon and Sting Mon that gain you a memory when you would DNA. Um, you can actually potentially loop so so much memory uh gain off of that because it'll it'll spawn out those two guys from sources and then you just dna again get another two memory for zero commitment as long as you have another another little five in hand and then that gives you the memory to just uh play imperial or go into a fighter mode or omnimon or like get that extra attack that's another two swings you would get on that turn if you were able to properly extend like i could see like you go dna um, into the Pyledramon, that's not as uh, the original one from Star Deck 9. Uh, go into the Dragon Mode, and then like, you don't have Partition anyway, so you summon those two that are going to give you uh, memory. Or if you have at least one Rookie out, um, if you have one of the... the just there's so many... There, there's a, actually a couple combo lines that are created from that Star Deck uh, Dragon Mode that I, I, I think actually kind of go kind of hard. Like the, There's a lot of memory manipulation there. Yeah. And then blue card security effect plays a tamer. I mean, <laughs> being able to play your Davis Davis can for free. See, this is, nuts. that's why that kind of confuses me because, like, at that point, mm -hmm. wouldn't you want to try to run Imperial Dragon Mode Ace because it also plays a tamer or a Digimon for free? 
So it's just like it does something kind of similar. Sure, you don't get the the like extra free value on creating another DNA stack, but I don't know. Uh, no, I mean like that that'd be hopefully whenever uh, I'm gonna I'll get around to making my own uh, my post my own uh, tournament review like or or if the the person is here uh, watches the vod after uh, like just just comment let me know i want to know like that's going to be one of my biggest questions when i do the video as well as like what were the the thought processes behind seeing a lot of these choices like omni one's a given however like that that's not it's still not common right blue card i could see it but it's still not common like i want to know like how often did you play blue card or how often was it in security and gave you the davis can you needed um three hammer sparks hilarious because the return of hammer spark a lot of people still don't expect it um, only one, like the Impamon, or the, the rookie count is so interesting too, which shouldn't go understated. It's like we're actually split on Vmon, Wormons. We're actually, we're in, I think traditionally is like more heavy Vmon, and then we'll play the Searcher, Wormon, and then one of that new green, purple one that like we allows us to combo or recycle uh, a specific piece in trash really well. And yeah, then the, that's the what I'm on. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a uh, a build that I was working on uh, where it was more Wormon focused, and I actually really did like it because uh, one of the big problems with this deck is being able to set up your tamer and play them efficiently and get them out so you are more memory efficient. So I was running uh, more Wormons, so that way I have access at Ken to just hard play Ken, and then Ken hard plays a Wormon for free, so I get two cards off of one. And then, ideally, I would use the Searcher Wormon to search uh, for something else to replace itself. So, that that was a build that I was potentially uh, theory crafting, And then, it was basically taking spot of the Davis. So, oh, I see. That yeah. Makes sense. It, it, was, it was not bad. Um, was it as mm-hmm. good as Vmon? No, just because the promo Vmon actually is really good but like well, i can only see... play one of it in this uh, in this deck which is yeah like, they're they're uh... basically playing the wormon and the vmon reverse from what most normal people would end up doing so mm-hmm. it, it just is a really uh, slightly unconventional build um because like i do like the idea of the raid x vmon because mm-hmm. raid allows you to try to deal with floodgates before they like can yep. start to be a problem because it's just like okay did you evolve into xv mon swing into your floodgate with raid uh or swing into your ukamon so i get the techiness of it and then it also having battle protection is pretty relevant because it could try to help stick itself around uh even though there's so much other types of removal that there's a high chance it's still gonna end up dying uh it's not a bad card by any stretch of the mean and mm-hmm. then uh i do like the togemogumon as well just because that helps the, i was gonna say that yeah that it helps with the like... colors i do think like after playing imperial and my brother also playing imperial i do mm-hmm. think having at least one armor in blue green is highly recommended because you do get those moments where it's like i have four stingmon in my hand i really wish yep. one of them was a ragermon or or sorry lydramon or togemogumon yeah, no, I agree with that. I mean, that that kind of goes into the the Togemogumon kind of goes into the choice of why you would have more Wormons, right? Because the he Digivolves on Wormon for two, whereas Lydramon would Digivolve on Vmon for two. Yeah, so and his abilities like... all turns. So, and it's uh, source stripping as well. So it's it's pretty good. It's um, so good. I, I like that card. I think he's underrated. Yeah, like that was also a reason why I was um, interested in setting up the wormon side of things and try to use more wormon was because it gave me better and easier access to togumogamon so Mm -hmm. uh but that's pretty much the event in a nutshell as far as like what it was doing uh and what was topping and being successful and if anyone's actually curious on where the current stand of the meta is um basically i boiled this whole meta down to five decks so you have (laughs) numemon magnamon yellow vaccine magnamon mirage and imperial i honestly think those are the five decks that are actually competitive this format and you do get stuff like lugamon and tyrant which are just 
on the cusp of being good. But again, it goes to like what I was saying earlier with BT16. And you got to look at those five decks and what your matchups are into those five decks and how well you do. If you could do, if you could at least beat two to three of them, ideally you want three, then you should be in good shape to be a solid rogue contender. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you can't, then you're borderline not an actual playable deck in this format. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, Lugamon, Lugamon peaking up as like the sixth, the sixth best deck probably is a sign of more of its popularity than it is necessarily as strong it is. Um, I think, I think, I don't know, because like Lugamon can always has the always the potential to win, but it also just always has the potential to just be too slow and not find its pieces on time. So it's it's tough. And people are learning not to attack into Lugamon. Um, there's been many a game as Lugamon where I, I win because my opponent decided to play a Digimon. Go side, yeah, play literally a Digimon. play a Digimon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> play a Digimon or just like attack my security a, a little too much, giving me exactly the training or the boost or the AG that I was looking for anyway. Yep. Or just the level fours, so that way I can spawn more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like exactly. it's, it's definitely uh, a deck you have to be aware of on how it plays and how to play against it. And sometimes that's the tough part, um, but that's also why I think it's like in the spot that it is in the meta. Because I, I do think it has a lot going for it, but it also has a lot going against it at the same time. Um, but as far as like where the BT-16 meta is, that's just my perspective based on all of the data that we currently have so as far as actually finally getting into the main topic um set design in in a sense on what do you think is a good set so again this could be from either a flavor perspective or a actual design perspective like what do you as a player want out of a set what do you think is a good set and uh if you were to kind of build a set what would it kind of be built around Mm -hmm. man uh I, I just like maybe i'm not sure where to go with that question sometimes because it's like i'm not a big fan of like you you said you really like royal knights i don't really like when they hijack a whole set and all its colors to facilitate one deck right we saw that with crossheart we saw that with hunters we saw that with Royal Knights. We saw we see her. We're seeing it going forward in BT eighteen, where uh, the the main deck of the set is like being high, is like hijacking all the all the cards and the slots in every other color, and then you end up with like two like mediocre decks, I guess, which is not great. Um, so and then there's sets. Hmm? Yeah. So you're more interested in. Uh, so there's different styles of sets that I like mm -hmm. to define. You're definitely more in the update camp guy. Like, oh, I, I love legacy support. Yeah. That is like all I want at this point. Like, we at this point we've seen every di like. At the end of the day, most people play Digimon because of Digimon. I feel like like there are there's the fringe people, and I I mean I, I mean that lovingly. Like that are like man, I just really love the memory system, and that's great. <laughs> and there's the people that are like, well, making my boss monsters cool. I don't necessarily care about the pictures, and there's plenty of people like that. But I feel like the main thing, most people play Digimon because it's Digimon. And I, I feel like we've hit most Digimon. I think we're missing a couple X antibodies here and there, or X antibody forms, I should say, here and there. Yeah, some Olympus um, 12s. Oh, yeah, we're still looking for that Olympus 12 set, I guess. Um, but for the most part, I think we've hit every mainstay Digimon. Now it's Now it's up to like just kind of going back and like supporting those decks properly or like breathing new life into those old decks like i know like people were disappointed when bt13 came out and lord knight was purple and had nothing to do with the original uh bt5 version um and things like that um so i don't know i think i think i think the the best yeah that's that's really what i want i want but this, if, if a new set were to come out today, I, I would want it to be Lobomon if I had to pick a season. But like fundamentally, I would want every deck, every color, or whatever. Like, cause like it's not even every color. Cause like in BT16, they so like is a good example of like, all right, instead of all six colors getting something, we are we're doing pairs, right? It was blue, green, black, yellow, and uh, red, yellow. Those are our big three decks because of season two, and you saw that like. Shakumon had to 
bite the bullet and lose half its color. So we just for no for almost no reason it feels like we lost um, access to the BT eight support. And you're like, well, like that was half the deck. Now I have to start over, and I'm playing half a deck. Whereas the Imperial stuff since the beginning of time has been blue green, and we just see them build on it again and again and again. And then suddenly you're like, wow, this deck just has a lot of good stuff. Well, yeah, because it's been supported over and over again, and without any drastic color changes. And the Sylphimon, I think, uh, Red Yellow has always struggled in terms... I think early on, Red Yellow was good, so they, they struggled to give it a lot of stuff. Granted, the, the Valkyrie Ace is arguably the best Ace we've had in a in a minute. Yeah, but they tried to be, like, red-green. Just because there's uh, the Fortitude stuff from EX5. Right, yeah. So it's like... and eh. So, like, yeah, BT... BT-16, like, I don't know. I, so, like, the key thing is, like, I would love, like, I, I think of, like, ideally in an ideal world, we go into, like, a rotational format and that every set should bring in something interesting for everybody. And, like, so, like, in Magic, if, if we're going there, like, they'll drop a set and they'll be like, this is our, I don't know, this is our... Uh, Oh, I can't even think of a mechanic right now. Uh, I know Innistrad transformations was a big thing in Innistrad, the original Innistrad. Every every color had access to either some type of uh, a flip card, and that was really big. Or they'd had madness. Madness was a, a whole mechanic that every color got, and it was interesting in it, <clears throat> including those. Oh, oh, you know what? Theros. Theros had devotion. Every color got devotion. Every color got an interesting way to work with devotion i feel like at the end of in in the middle of theros block i know black devotion was the best one for a while but every color will had something an interesting way to like develop into that and that's kind of why i gravitate towards bt4 as one of my favorite sets or bt7 just because every deck got digiburst every deck was using digiburst so it became like this digiburst meta which is really cool and then bt7 was hybrids almost every color had access to good hybrids and it was hybrid meta. And I, I think, like, people go back and think, oh, hybrid meta sucked. But it's, like, if, if it's an ever-evolving game, being able to go back and pinpoint, like, that was hybrid meta. That was X antibody meta. That This is DNA meta, if you will, for the for 16. We were able to say that instead. Oh, burst meta for, or I guess burst meta is weird. Like, burst mode meta, Ace you can meta. call for third. Yeah, like, stuff like that is really interesting. Um, I think, like, looking back over the lifespan of the game, that makes, makes yeah, it really so, sad. So, like, as mm -hmm. a player, it seems like you prefer parity. You want everything to be on as equal of a playing field as it humanly possibly can mechanically. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't like when, like, one color gets ignored in a set for I, erroneous reasons, I guess. Got it. Okay. So, now I'm, I'm pegging, I'm getting a better understanding of, uh, out of you not only just as a player but as a person as well because of what you tend to gravitate towards and what you kind of enjoy and mm -hmm. i do like parody i think parody is it, it should be a baseline thing that they always want to strive for but it seems like that's a little bit on the harder side depending on what the flavor of the set is and who's going to be appearing in the set because like Yes, it, it is very nice to see mm -hmm. that Black hasn't gotten an ace yet, and uh, that's uh, because Black really doesn't need one because of how stupid that color can be at times. Um, but yeah, like the fact that Black doesn't actually have a level 5 ace Digimon, that would kind of bother you a lot. As, uh, yeah, it does bug me a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Purple not getting one. Purple having, like, the purple arguably the worst one. Yeah, Purple has Myotis Mon, and it's arguably the worst. And, like, some people are experimenting with the Myotis engine, but it has put up zero results so far. So, like, I think it's a cute thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's slightly borderline on the unhealthy aspect of where TCGs end up going. I don't yeah. like free recursive value engines that have zero actual cost to them after a while. Um, yeah. But, like, my Otis Mon's cute. He's doing his thing, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's definitely no. nowhere on the levels of uh, Imperial by any standpoint. No, and and going forward, we're getting more level uh, aces, right? We're getting a whole, sw uh, a whole sweep of 
uh, level seven aces, and that's going to be a journey for everybody to like uh, that's absorb. Gonna be, and meet yeah, that's, seven. that's going to be some extra spooky stuff. Like, I would think from the onset, you would like the direction of BT17 based on what you prefer as a player and what you look forward to out of sets. Because BT17, for the most part, is just a ginormous update set. Like, there's not really that many new things going on. There's not a though. My only issue with seventeen, though, because I agree, like every it's just like a big legacy set, except for the the Omni Month set is like it's very strictly its own deck. We're at, but like it's really cool because like it recontextualizes old cards into a new deck, right? Like that's a deck that's using both secret rares from BT fourteen and fifteen in the War Greymon and the Metal Gururumon, and just kind of using them in a completely different way which i think is really cool and then yeah like ancient guru comes back as much as i'm more of a magna guru guy it's cool to see ancient guru come back and ancient Greymon. um but like 17 struggles in the sense that like again like they don't have like it doesn't have a clear identity like that's it's like a through line for the whole set it's just like these these decks got updated um and uh, and most of them got updated by like either returning to an old uh mechanic that they were running with uh like shine gray is going back to the bt2 style which eh, could be good or worse i'm not i'm not a shine gray player so i don't know how they feel about that um going returning back to the bt2 version and then like gallant mon gets a whole i uh, guess like a, it feels like a fifth way to try to make this deck relevant um, and I think this is the most successful they've been, even though we're not going to be able to experience it because we're not getting the Megadramon on time, or the Megadramon Ace on time. Yeah, we're getting that in December. Uh, because if yeah. anyone's unfamiliar, we actually do have a mini set coming out. And uh, it is going to be really interesting to see how that set plays out. But for the most part, that's like them just trying to give us the LM cards because I don't know why they decided to even bother with LM cards because they basically just did promo 2.0, um, which we really <laughs> didn't need because they already have a hard time with promos. And now LM cards are basically more promos, but labeled differently. Uh, but at least we get, like, a set to give us LM3 and LM4, and then some of the reprints from LM2. Yeah, it'll be... It's the best they could do, I guess. That's what I I, I just kind of chalk it up to. Like, we, we re, especially with the travesty that was how we got LM1. Um, yeah, I'd much rather this and getting it late than... Uh, get experiencing uh, lm1 inside of like BT a bt18 or whatever yeah like that yeah. was that's just not how it, that was not great yeah or like it being in a reprint set and like rb1 and then the lm cards be hard to get like yeah the, there's obvious worse ways they could have just given it to us instead of just here's a dedicated mini set but we haven't really seen mini sets in digimon before so that's that's where it'll be interesting to see what they do because maybe they could use those mini sets to actually give us reprints and promos mm -hmm. in a more meaningful way instead of just being absolutely dog water bad at it because they are <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i'm still worried about that going forward with uh, a united format but we'll see <laughs> Yeah, but it's funny that you're not super hot on uh, BT-17 because I actually am looking at BT-17 from a design standpoint, not like an individual card standpoint. Uh, mm -hmm. Trust me, there's plenty wrong with BT-17 <laughs> um, card, individual card-wise. But mm -hmm. as far as what the set is doing design-wise, I actually like the design of BT-17 quite a lot because I do like the legacy support. Um, yes, that's the best thing about it. Yeah. Getting like Renamon supports in that set, which is something I know we've been waiting for for a bit too. Yeah, so I I am a big fan of legacy support. Uh, I like the fact that it's supporting some of the newer decks in uh, this block because they do have block specific decks that they generally like to support. And then I do also like the fact that it does have its own self included deck and. I feel like that's the one thing Digimon really struggles with is when, how, and where to make those self-inclusive decks where I don't need any outside cards 
to be able to make this deck if I just buy enough. Uh, granted, outside cards are only going to enhance it, but at least it gives you a baser foundation. So that's mm -hmm. partially also one of the reasons why I also like BT-13, is because if I just buy enough of BT-13, I could build Royal Knights. Like That's true. That's that's kind of cool, and Digimon is Wait, usually what really deck, bad at that. What, I'm, I'm blanking. What deck are you talking about in 17 that does Are you able to just build off the gate? Omnimon. Omnimon? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you have... So, like, the way a lot of Digimon decks are built, and this annoys the ever-living crap out of me, is, like, at the start of a block, they'll introduce you to the new thingy. And then mm -hmm. um, that new thingy only has half of its line, so you have to meander and figure out what the heck I'm supposed to do while I'm waiting for the second half to come in the next set. And yep. uh, Omnimon gives you both lines. It gives you both the Garuru and the... Um, uh, and the Agumon to be mm -hmm. able to play it out of the gate, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, same thing with like cool. Royal Knights. Uh, I might be blanking, and it might not be the full line. Um, uh, no, yeah. In, se in seventeen, you get the the rookie and the level six. You get the Greymon, who's the white secret rare of the set, I think. Um, and then you get the Tamer. You get a Tai and Kari that is also pretty good for the deck. I think. I think that deck like is in the like. What else? You, yeah, you have so the I guess, I guess you do you have, have like half the, the deck. Yeah, there's there's still going to be some outside stuff. But like, the fact is you have... Like Hunters. Hunters was really... It yeah, was BT12 was 99%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hunters is probably a better example where it's just like, you just buy BT12 and then you could just end up making Hunters. Like, yeah, it kind of sucks because, because you do get a lot of chaff that is supposed to go inside of the deck or be an alternate version of the deck. But like, I hate it when they just... Here's half of a deck. Put mm -hmm. what you can together as far as the other half, which that's I unironically where the most creative versions of that deck come from. But mm -hmm. once it gets its actual second and third wave of support to be a real standalone deck, that's when it is. I I love the fact that sometimes we do get just the ability to just have a deck out of a set because that makes it easier for new players to come in because it's just like, oh, what set do I buy? Usually my answer is to gravitate towards to the sets that actually have decks unless it's supporting their favorite Digimon. Then I say, just go with your favorite Digimon, whatever set has that, um, because that'll make uh, them smile. Now, for sure. No, I, I agree. And then Lugamon. Lugamon also gets a whole whole new way to play its deck here and i'm i'm still not convinced which version of lugamon is going to end up being the best version of lugamon but i'm excited to try it tamagotchi mode is kind of sick takami kazuchi yeah yeah tamagotchi mode <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying all of that i'm gonna be real with you what fenry lugamon takami kazuchi i i, I yeah. do like that card a lot but um, like BT 17 is really close outside of the fact that I was completely wrong about building Omnimon out of the box, um, and needing, no, no, I still yeah. get you though. It's yeah. really cool. And uh, I think going into BT 18, like as much as it's like a travesty for legacy support, like you do get two interesting self-contained decks for the most part. Like, you don't really need anything outside of the set to build the both uh, the the koji susano and the takuya susano I, I guess we're calling them i don't know what to really call them like they're like susano turbo decks but like they're like half, i don't know I don't, it's weird yeah it definitely felt like a lot like so i'm kind of like you where i don't like the entire set to be cannibalized by that so like if they could literally yeah. just have one color dedicated yeah. to both evolution lines supporting one deck and actually being good not giving mm -hmm. us this like baby crap that isn't worth anything and it's literally just the filler um for the second evolution line that isn't going to be supporting the the color as well as the main one that is supposed to be the deck um like there's no reason why they can't just give us um a single color dedicated to getting a full evolution like a full two evolution lines like yeah that's that's really what i wish they would end up doing to mm -hmm. at least make it so you have the ability to build a deck out of the set and then you still have the legacy support for what the rest of the other colors were doing 
Like, yeah. I get the idea from a marketing standpoint is to sprinkle it out, spread it out, so that way it keeps players invested in wanting to buy the booster boxes. Uh, that's why Lukamon has incomplete evolution lines and literally single card spreads um, throughout all of block three. Yeah. Uh, is to try to keep players invested in that deck. And unfortunately, the deck has to be good in order for them to want to do that. And Lukamon right now is just barely on the cusp of Rogue. So that doesn't give a whole lot of players confidence that the deck's actually going to have some good staying power. Especially if we look at Japanese results. We see that Black SOCs is actually eclipsing uh, Fenrir Lukamon. So it also is not like leaving a good impression that that was actually a good thing when the more condensed SOC deck is performing better. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and Lugamon, like, again, the Lugamon this set is, like, just completely... Or in 17 will be completely switched. And, uh, I mean, like, even in, in EX6 coming next, we're, we're seeing that it kind of, like, the seven great demon lords, same as BT3, like, kind of cannibalized most of the set. Well, and at then... least it was mostly designated to one color, which was purple. So you still That's have, fair. like, everything all of the other colors are doing, and it's just purple is mostly Demon Lords, which my brother is super, super excited for, and I really hope no. that uh, Ogudamon is not a super expensive card. He, on paper, he realistically shouldn't be, but um, the... He shouldn't be? I, I think, no, I mean, it's I a think... secret rare in, in an EX set, so it's not guaranteed to pull, but you only need... Do you need to play four? Is it like an Omnimon situation? No, you play it, like, anywhere between two and three, depending on how often you want to try to see Ogudamon. Got you. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, but, like, uh, not to try to get too deep into the market side of things, but, like, uh, mm -hmm. EX... EX sets are usually, like, really good new player sets, even though the power level is generally a lot lower than a BT set. Uh, but at least, like, when they do do those types of things, uh, unfortunately, when they make those self-included decks, they're usually... they end up being dated. Like, I mean, granted, they didn't have to make Hunters dated. They could have just given yeah. us more Hunters cards... And then it wouldn't be dated anymore. But like Omnimon, the way it was designed for Royal Knights, it's it, it's dated. Uh, same Absolutely. thing. Same thing with um, uh, Reapers, uh, D Reapers. If they don't continue to support it, then it is just dated. And I get like these are clock style decks where it's just like yeah, between royal knights d reapers and now seven great demon lords which is about to come out like they all kind of mm. do almost the exact same thing let me hard mm. play my dude for cheap because my egg lets me do that and then let me try to have some sort of passive value engine to be able to try to keep up with everything else that the game is doing and then i have this big win condition button that once the game eclipses a certain amount of turns I reasonably should be able to push and just win the game on the spot. I think, like, clock decks are good for the game because it does set the tone and pacing of how the rest of the, you know, the competitive format should follow and precede it. Uh, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, they do end up getting dated, which is why I would want a set in a BT set to just dedicate a full evolution line to one Digimon for one color. And then maybe swap in the next set uh it could be a different digimon for a different color but then you still get some sprinkles of updates for that color using that slot um so like yeah. they could give yellow a good deck in i'll just say bt21 and then that'll be the full yellow deck out of the box uh or boxes should say that and then in bt22 yellow will help support what was already founded in uh, in the uh, BT21 deck. And then it could swap to something else while still updating it towards that colors, and they could just keep doing that rinse and repeat, but... Uh, yeah, they don't... I they don't, don't do know. it. They don't do it. It's... Uh, first of all, D-Reaper can stay gone. I'm not... I've never been a fan of that deck. I don't... I don't like... D-Reaper falls under the, the type of deck that breaks the rules by not having levels, and I'm not okay with that. Oh, so, I'm, I'm not saying they're good at it yeah. all the time. Bandai but has some... I will, yeah, Bandai I will, has... Go ahead. Go, I was going to say that... I will say that, like, like they just... 
like you look at like things that they could have kept supporting and then just like miss the mark um like crossheart crossheart was a very popular deck uh, i know a lot of i know a lot of friends came out of playing crossheart being like I, I wish this deck would get updated and like they try like or <laughs> i can't even call it try like we got the shoutmon cross to ballista mode who's not even a crossheart yeah um, that was a very half-hearted attempt that was nice. and then and then they do it again with uh shoutmon derulo cannon who doesn't even have save so it's like <laughs> Oh, it's just like they struggle. I mean, hopefully with the, the I think we're going into BT19, we'll see Crossheart maybe finally get uh, some support. Like after, was it the X10? So this will be like 13 sets before Crossheart got some real support. So I don't and know, man. Even then, they're probably going to try to replace the entire Crossheart deck. Like that's just their MO is when they revisit, usually if it's not a direct update, they will just try to completely replace, which is what we've seen with Ragnalord Mon so many times. We're on iteration number three, and all of the other iterations really don't play very well with each other. Because you got iteration one, which is just, I'm pretty much vanilla. And then you got iteration two, where it's just like, I'm going to try to YOLO out a level five so I can easily digivolve into a level six to line up DNA. And now you have iteration three, which is just like, I don't care about any of that. I just want to build one Digimon and then just blast and DNA. And then hand, hand loop. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I, I will say that's the most interesting version so far, but it's still not I mean, good. each time they attempt to visit something that hasn't been good, it generally gets better. I, I use generally loosely because sometimes they still just like whatever they're working with is just still bad. Like it's just Wait, either least... mechanically or just they just chose to hold it back yeah they at least kept its colors though like ragnar lord has at least stayed red black for a good minute like, at least the entire time which uh i can't can't say the same for other 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 decks and other other legacy support they've tried to revisit um even mastermind i think in the x6 struggles a little bit like i don't think the new mastermind stuff really meshes well with how mastermind was played in starter deck I don't remember star deck nine i don't, I don't remember yeah that, uh, somewhere in there mm, like it's just it's just weird man like they they try to give people hope with some of the support and then it just falls flat um the only i mean i don't know i guess we'll, we'll just have to see going forward what 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 they do now that i think we're in block four we're it seems like we're we're, we're kind of going through the, we're in a loop we're, we're we're kind of finishing a loop right we're we revisited season four now. Now we're going to revisit uh, Cross Art. We're about to go. They announced recently that we're going to revisit X Antibody and give a lot of cards that don't have X Antibodies their X Antibody forms. Yeah. So, um, like, in terms of their theming, so far they are still just really high on using anime only property for the most part with a little bit of manga stuff because uh, they're probably going to end up visiting um savers again which was season five just because uh like we have the beginning of savers and then we have the end of savers so we don't have that middle portion where they were facing like the bio merge uh like characters so they're still unexplored territory for them to go back to um and like mm. that's kind of just how they feel like i feel like they're just running it where it's just like they're breaking each part into like three segments to spread one season into three sets um mm -hmm. in terms of like actually supporting it and then obviously they'll do a movie set because bt17 is technically the second movie set and bt5 was the first movie set so they'll right. they'll just use a entire set to dedicate to movie support um which i yeah. think is like fine it's cool um Considering like I, that tends to be a legacy set more than anything, I can see I can see why they struggle with uh, struggle with uh, trying to get the. I know there's a lot of there's an outcry for getting more game uh, representation, but really what that boils down to for most Digimon games is just having the tamers represented more so than the Digimon because most of the Digimon games, if not all of them, I'm not, I'm not sure how Survive went, but like most of those games like. Sure, you get a air quotes starter Digimon, but after that, you kind of just farm whatever Digimon you want. Oh, and Survive then... is so different. I would love 
love a survive set because survive basically mm -hmm. uh it was a visual novel and yeah. because of the visual novel-esque nature of it it basically is like its own anime in a sense except in a video game and mm -hmm. really dark and really entertaining and you have a good cast of characters that each have full evolution lines and then um, even with alternate lines right like... yeah the main character has alternate lines most of the time the characters have an will have an ultimate like an alternate mega that they can uh... go into based on the different routes that you could take uh mm -hmm. but they do have dedicated full evolution lines and dedicated cards for them so like i would love to see survive just made as a set and they could even do the whole like three act structure thing where it's just like yeah we could break up the story of survive into three different acts based on the different paths that you have to take so mm -hmm. they could cover okay here's your generic route um yeah that's going to be dedicated to one set then you're going to have uh another one and another one so and then if they really wanted to because there's no movie for survive they could do perfect ending like oh this is supporting the perfect ending to survive like they easily could do something like that to be able to take the theme and spread it across multiple sets uh because what they generally do for set design is they'll have a core theme and a sub theme so yeah. the core theme is just what the set's actually going to be focused about uh, and what the block is focused about. So block three right now is uh, Seekers. So that's the big theme with block three. A lot of stuff in he in block three is supporting Seekers in every single set. Yeah. And then the sub theme will just be whatever they feel like. So BT-16 is the O2 movie. It's wholeheartedly dedicated to the O2 movie and some more O2 support. So that's the sub theme. Yeah. And they could easily do that. And right now, they have the sub-themes. Uh, I don't exactly know. Oh, Block 4 is going to be Liberators. So uh, Right, right, yeah. right. So in all of Block 4, every single set is going to have something Liberator-related. And then the sub-theme is going to be, like, just whatever. Um, but even then, like, they they're not even supporting Liberator evenly. Like, they've, annu they've already announced... Uh, so obviously the main two was the Petromon or the Terramon and then the Shumon. They got each got a starter deck and then they each got represented in EX7 along with a line for uh, promos. Um, so they're the most they come out the most supported of all of the Liberator sets. But then like the Impmon got a single line with nothing else to really back it up or play with it. Yeah, and that's then... that's why I think like they need to give two dedicated lines. Like it's technically out of the box supposed to be playing with the eismon stuff from the same set because it's dark dragon stuff but mm -hmm. i wish it just had a dedicated second line like an actual then, dedicated second line yeah exactly and the, but like then you turn around and then like was it the the beehive the the beehive digimon yeah uh, fambimon winner yeah winner and fambi like they've already announced two unique lines for that deck so once we get both lines like we have a complete deck and it's going to be it's going to be just playable out the gate. Whereas, like, uh, didn't they... I think they went on record saying that BT-18 was just supposed to be, like, Owen and Zenith. And Owen didn't get a single card other than the Tamer. And then Zenith got a rookie and a champion. Yeah. Like, I mean, oh they're God. trying to pace it out for the story because, like, we already got leaks that um, in... 19 no it was uh ex yeah it was ex8 uh mm -hmm. we already got leaked that uh there's gonna be medieval gallant mon and he's going to be uh shoto's new ace card uh he might actually be an ace card um physically but the fact not, that, i didn't know how to read that do you when they say ace card do you mean like he's gonna be his, his new like, winning card like the card that's going to be his new mega oh that's really? that's how i'm reading it because it's okay so like, i read it i read it as like an ace card like overflow of minus four like a lot i feel like there's two ways to read it. it's like oh it's his dark magician and like i didn't read it that way i'm reading it like it's just gonna be an ace card for the Zafargamon or the, the Terramon deck. Yeah, um. so the, there is both ways to read into it, but the fact that 
we have that type of a spoiler means that we know somewhere in the story that Shoto is going to be interacting with medieval Gallantmon. And some yeah. people might actually hate that as a spoiler because, you know, TCGs have to come out and we have to have this information before um, stores actually go to buy it so they know what they're kind of buying and how to hype mm -hmm. it up. But incidentally, because Liberators just started, we already have that spoiler. And yeah. just like how Zenith is not going to be giving up um, his Digimon, he's still going to be sticking with Galactimon. Um, so that was kind of a light spoiler. Uh, and... Yeah, and then, like, but, like, what's interesting about that, so this is the, for the, uh, other than the Liberator set that we just got, um, EX sets, they were trying to kind of put them in parity with, like, uh, one of the Digivices. I forget what they're called, but, the, like, the little Digivice, like, Animal Coliseum. Yeah, the, the and... Pendulum... The, the pendulums, right? And I, I think even the the Infernal Ascension set is somewhat based off of uh, some of the pendulum stuff. Yeah, because they've been going um, by families like Draconic Roar, Nature Spirits, uh, Night Soldiers, Deep Savers. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The X8 is they're going into the Nightmare Soldiers and the Deep Savers, which I think are pendulum uh, devices too. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Yeah, don't they're, they're all just... Much. They're all just classic Digimon families. I have playmats that I made uh, dedicated to each one. Uh, mm -hmm. Nobody has them because nobody bought them because, uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's a, that's uh, a different story. Yeah. Um, I did put the time to design all of them before they were actually supported in the TCG. Um, and now that they're being supported more, I think that's kind of cool uh, because that gives more space. But I feel like Bandai... This is going to go a little bit off the rails in terms of like talking about set design and just go more into individual card design. Um, Bandai is just not good at card design. I'm, I'm just going to say it right now. Oof, they are just they... not good. So they, they have such a good core in foundation, and they do some really good exploration with that. But for whatever reason, they'll always have just this ginormous oopsie oversight card that's like why was this even printed and they do this for all their games it's not a digimon thing specifically mm -hmm. they do this for every one of their games where it's just like oh that was kind of a ginormous mistake why yeah. how who said that was okay who let that go through like apoclemon should have just been dark masters only related he did not need to overreach to any level six with an on play ability just like how shoto uh from ex7 does not uh, need to that, give is everything that where you're going with this yeah. the new, then yeah. the, the, the he, new he hot does, button is shout out to shoto right like, yeah he, he does not need to give everything blocker like they could have limited it to just uh green if they really wanted to try to make it a more green generic card but like mm -hmm. they do these ginormous oopsie oversights that like it boggles my mind how stupid they are yeah, because giving mother d reaper blocker is problematic i will i don't i don't know how deep it goes with shoto yet i know there's a lot of uproar about it um well it's the fact that they are using it in like Omnimon, seven demon lords yeah seven demon lords yep. and omnimon to accomplish the same thing where it's just like yeah so here's this blocker that i played for two that mm -hmm. also kills something and i uh, it's a huge blocker i put borderline any investment in it's it's just yeah. it's just so stupid oversight cards that really just ruin certain aspects of the game and they don't have to do them that way either which is the crazy part and it drives me up a wall yeah shoto could have very easily have said like green avian or, or something, liberator then... or mm -hmm. uh vortex warrior like there's so many things they could have done to limit the card that like i especially since digimon is such a heavy archetype based game that it really yeah. boggles my mind Whenever they open something up, it is immediately the most dangerous thing they could have ever humanly possibly done. Um, so going back on track with set design. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think they do an okay job at set design. Uh, in the beginning of the game, I do think their set design kind of sucked because it felt excruciatingly random. 
But now they definitely are sticking more to their themes. The mechanics are playing inside of the themes. Um, whether that creates parody or not is to be determined. Um, mm -hmm. They try to, at least. Like, they kind of do. Yeah, for sure. No, I think they definitely do try. I don't know. It's just like, you'll always see that one color that gets ignored in a set, and you're like, but why? <laughs> yeah, most uh, of the time it's like yellow, because yellow is one of the most dangerous colors in the entire game, but... Speaking of which, Dominimon is not going to help the uh, Patamon allegations. I will... <laughs> no, I he's, will he's say... making the argument worse. Yeah, like that that whole that whole th oh my god so much memory on a single turn from a, from a rookie yeah it's tough it, but... it really is but i think like what they were attempting to do was fine in concepts because like mm -hmm. that was a new wave of design of rookies that we've seen sprinkled throughout all of block three where they're trying to encourage you to raise on the rookie level it's just between all of the other different cards in play uh, the fact that you basically can, like, raise out on a rookie, end off in a mega, be, have had started with one memory, and still not pass turn, I think is something they really just kind of messed up in terms of the, the game design prospect mm -hmm. of it. But I liked the idea where each rookie had the ability to want to do something when you moved it out of raising i thought that was kind of neat and that's kind of like the parody that you're looking for. yeah no that was really sick and then purple didn't get one other i guess lugamon lugamon but, was was their rookie or and then black was uh commandramon i guess so everyone did kind of get one there well, commandramon was just a basic searcher he was just he oh just never mind some... black didn't get one yeah but, <laughs> black, black and yellow usually are the colors that get shafted when it comes to like the parody where they're playing on equal mechanics as everyone else. Because uh, I don't think Black still has one. Well, they technically do now um, with the Black SOC stuff, but Purple could also use it too. So Yeah, uh... it's, a, it's dual colored, which is weird, and they still don't have an ace, like level 5 ace, like you said. Yeah. And even then, like, they have a Black level 6 ace, but it was it was definitely, like made for blue and just like it didn't feel i don't know man yeah technically they though. had them in the starter decks that's where the the core base of it because you had the agumons and the gabumons raise out if the opponent had a digimon gain a memory right 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 like, but th yeah. those effects weren't as big but yeah no you're right yeah but that's what kind of where starter decks come in is to try to shore up some of the gaps in their set design i feel like uh to kind of like start mm -hmm. round uh bringing things home and bringing this conversation to a close because like we do see a lot of the time like hey here's a starter deck and then in the next set is something that's going to support the starter deck mm -hmm. uh i'm I actually seeing that i hope we get a whole wave of like one piece is doing a thing where they're re they're having a whole wave of starter decks one uh a starter deck for every color again just like on launch for them and digimon hasn't done that like it was very you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, One like just, just a big resurgence on trying to reinvigorate interest and give new players an actual access point to the game. Because believe me, right now, One Piece mm -hmm. is borderline unapproachable. Um, because, like, if you don't uh, buy the a... The price is pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, One Piece is excruciatingly tough to get into. And... Like, Digimon, we don't have nearly as many starter decks as One Piece does. Like, the fact that when One Piece came out and on their, like, fifth set, they're already on, like, starter deck 20. I'm just like, what the heck? We, they also have... we don't even have 20 starter decks. Yeah, they have 20 starter decks, and they have two... They already have two what they call advanced... They call ultimate decks, but it would be our advanced decks. We have, we have two advanced... We, we already are matched up on terms of advanced deck count, and I don't think we've an they've announced a third one for digimon but i think no, they've announced yet. a third one for one piece which is funny but yeah but i do think like starter deck products or like advanced deck products really help lower the barrier to entry which is why i like the idea of a set containing a deck inside of it for you to build towards whether that's dedicated to one color or spread out is to be determined but mm -hmm. like i I don't like it when they do what they did with the Rapid Bond starter deck, where it's just like, yeah, so in order to actually upgrade this the way we intended, you're going to need to buy four secret rares. I think that is so disingenuous. That was a miss, yeah. That was but such a But the Beelzebub was sick. 
Bilsma was, but well, Bilsma had its own issues because actually getting the EX2 stuff at the time was. Yeah, well, not I mean, simple. it came with most of the reprints. Uh, it was mostly just EX2. Um, the BLs. level six himself. Yeah, yeah, the level six himself. But that's because it was more of an older card that was seeing more and more play. Uh, mm -hmm. That also did get a reprint because of the Beelzemon Cup. It's just you had to, like, what, win the Beelzemon Cup or win uh, the lottery of the RNG random pack thing. But regardless, I think it was it was a winner card. Never mind. Uh, I'm being s silly. Um, but yeah, like, mm -hmm. when, when they do that type of stuff where it's just like they have this starter deck and then they either don't support it, like with the Agumon and Gabumon, or the support gets, like, too inaccessible or banned in some yeah. cases. It's yeah. it's just, like, that's not exactly a good... It's not making me want to recommend that type of a product to a new player. And that's, like, the whole point on having good set design is, like, to have a good access point into the game. And you want, ideally, every set to try to be the good access point into the game. And... Like, that's the initial goal, is so that way, it doesn't matter when a player is starting, they'll always be able to have something to pick up and play real quickly and real efficiently. And starter decks are nice. Uh, I wish we had more. Yeah, I just wish for a whole new wave. Like, it would be sick to see, like... Like, there was zero reason they couldn't have given us the, the Itmon Liberator starter deck. To yeah, give like us more would, dark dragons. Cool to get a, a whole liberator wave of starter decks. Oh, wait, See, like we already have. That would have been so cool. A liberator wave of starter decks. Just release one in each color. Each character is supported because you have yeah. uh, Shoto being green. You yep. had Itmon being purple. purple. Uh, you had Owen being red. red. Zenith mm -hmm. being black. Uh, Fanbimon being, I guess that would be an off one because that's also black and green. So those well, colors are. Yeah, they have more characters. Yeah, than you they have need, at least yellow. Need, yeah, yeah, yellow mm -hmm. being puppets, and then uh, what's that's the last color? Right? No, there's uh, one green. more color. Blue. Oh, blue. We don't have a blue. We don't have a blue. Yeah. yeah. We have a. It's like the. It's it's a weird like fish coral thing. We haven't we haven't seen anything come from it yet. Which I mean, there's the technically there's the. Uh, the hex blau it does it doesn't say liberator but there's a lot of hex blau representation in the the comic so that's so far just the first chapter and the first big fight i'm not gonna yeah. like discount it but i'm not gonna count it either i mean we did immediately get support for it uh as that chapter came out right it was like a lot well of, that was the, the whole point to hype it up and have the set hype it up too yeah, that's fair. So, uh, but I mean, I mean yeah, it's a blue. Blue gets the shaft. We're we're back to th some weird fish stuff, which never does well. But in in Liberator, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Blue Blue's a question mark on Liberator right now for sure. I mean, they could have easily just repurposed a Digimon to be blue just for a starter deck. Um, oh yeah, that's true. or or have actually had enough foresight to create a blue character to represent blue in liberators mm -hmm. so that way they could have a starter deck but that just goes to what we're saying like there's so much more yeah. that they could do with their product design to be able to better enhance the game overall than what they're doing and i already think what they're doing is pretty okay it, it's not great but it's mm -hmm. not amazing i don't i don't have any issues with their the, the only miss they had on a starter deck was definitely like the ragnar lord starter deck and then after <laughs> that, that was... I, every starter deck was good I, there, I don't think at any point was i like man why are they even printing this i mean um, the black digiburst starter deck was pretty bad the you did black digiburst are you talking about yeah but it was like starter deck six Oh, the the yeah the, because we got uh, the, that was supposed to be the introduction to black as a starter deck, right? Right, and I get that. So like maybe they do need to like have these different levels where it's just like here's a intro deck versus a starter deck versus an advanced deck, or like they could obviously call intro something else, like a beginner deck versus a starter deck versus mm -hmm. a uh, advanced deck. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I get, I get even the purple deck was kind of like I remember the getting OTK'd by that Crest Room on one time, and then after that, it wasn't really relevant. That card was actually pretty good for for what it was for a starter deck mm -hmm. card. It was actually pretty good at the time. Um, I believe it. Yeah, but that's kind it was, of it was a little before my time. I think it was like I I, I came in on BT four, and that's yeah. when the green starter deck and. 
Yeah, it was, was green. It was green, black, and purple because oh, they they yeah. did all come out together. You're right. Yeah, because they released the first three with the game, and this is something I hate. Band that Bandai does at the beginning of all their games is they separate their colors, where it's just like here's the first three or four colors, and then here's yeah. another color in this set that's obviously going to be behind on support, so they have to try to overtune it. Um, which either goes absolutely fantastically poorly or immensely, incredibly poorly. Um, and then, oh, yeah, and then uh, they'll just keep introducing another new color until they have all of the colors, and then they'll all eventually be mm -hmm. on parity, and then they'll have a starter deck to try to catch it up and give it cards, and I just, I hate when they do that, and they they love to do that, and I think it's incredibly stupid. Yeah, it definitely definitely is what it is. Yeah, at least Union Arena won't have that issue because each set is an anime. <laughs> so there yeah, is no, no uh, colors to... Uh, I mean, there are colors, um, but there's no, like, oh, uh, did Jujutsu Kaisen really need to have all six colors? Arguably no, which I think is fine, especially if they're consistent with that throughout all of their sets, where it's just like, okay... One anime isn't going to get all six colors. It could get four colors. And that might drive mm -hmm. a person like you up the wall. But, like, I <laughs> actually kind of think that's kind of cool. Because usually one of the decks is going to be better than any of the others anyway. Yeah, they're, they're, I'm, I'm kind of on a wait-and-see camp with uh, with a Union Arena. We'll have to see how it, it plays out. Yeah, that's I'm the not, type of I'm game. I'm not convinced one way or the other. Yeah, that's the type of game where I buy one deck and I will never touch it the game ever again. Well, that I and... think that's what they want. I think they're okay with that. Like, I fully intend to like get the Yu Yu Hakusho deck or like I don't know Full Metal Alchemist deck if that ever comes out, and just be like the idea that I could just have a Union Arena deck in my pocket and uh, be relevant for uh, sets to come. It sounds it sounds like a healthy spot for like a ca more casual type game. It does, um, but that's that's Union Arena, and mm -hmm. I th I think like they're just trying to make Union Arena like the perfect side game. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully they, with unification, give Digimon way more love than they've ever done. Because I've been on the record, and I'm still going to be on the record and say that after, post unification. That mm -hmm. year is going to be the most important year of Digimon where they cannot screw it up. They cannot. If they screw mm. it up, that actually could have some very negative ripples into what the game is going to look like going forward. Gotcha. No, I, I agree. Like, There's just a few key questions I have about the unification, and it's going to be how will promos go Oh, that's Oh, that's forward. always a big one, yeah. Because Bandai's always... Promo, yeah, how will promos be and how will the ban list be? Because I'm not... People are convinced... Like, people are trying to say that, like, oh, because we'll be unified means the ban lists will happen more often. I'm like, I don't know if I agree with that. And if we have to suffer what Japan had to suffer with uh, Apocalymon, like, I don't... I don't know where Digimon would be right now. <laughs> well, I... Part of me really wants Bandai to learn what Kaiju number 8 is doing. Uh, and by that, if anyone's never seen Kaiju Number Eight, go watch it. Fantastic show! It is. It is probably going to be a really good binge once all of the episodes for season one is done. But what I mean by uh, pulling a Kaiju Number Eight is that's obviously a Japanese anime that's being aired in Japan, but it was also being simul dubbed in uh, English speaking areas i'm referring to yes and north america so it was simul dubbed and the op and ed were both english like popular english singers so to me that's screaming that that show is being heavily marketed towards the western audience so mm -hmm. digimon obviously is not super popular in japan uh sorry as much as i like to think it's the world's greatest ip it's not um mm -hmm. i personally love it and me and a lot of western audience people also love it and shocker digimon is bigger in the west so maybe they should start listening to the west a little bit more quicker 
especially when unification happens, because we're the ones that are going to have the biggest outcries compared to Japan. Like, Japan will just be like, yeah, we'll just do what we did with security control and basically ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist, which is cool. Having that universal house rule of let's just not be stupid uh, sometimes is good. Apocalypse. That'd be great. Can we do that? I would love that. It, just, yeah, that's why. Let's I... all agree. No more security control, please. It, yeah. Um, but Apocalypse was a big exception where it was just like, yeah, there's actually no reason not to play this deck. Um, mm -hmm. and like, that's part of the reason why it got hit was because like, there actually was no reason not to play it because it was just that good, that powerful and egregious. And if well, it was like able to find something it was like if you didn't if you didn't play apocalypse then you played anubis and if you didn't play anubis you kind of tried to play fenrir because it was the only thing that could yeah fenrir or melga mm -hmm. but... and then i oh poor melga this is suffered yeah. the crimes of anubis man <laughs> he he had his own crimes don't, don't i don't know about this i don't know about this this is this is heresy yeah melga's but... fine but I, I honestly hope that they start listening to uh, the Western audience post-unification a little bit more. Not, maybe not everything we say, uh, but mm -hmm. a little bit more taking into account what we're actually trying to say. Because right now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're getting a ban restriction list anytime soon. We already know that Magnamon is a huge problem that's limiting the entire format and warping the entire format we could all say numemon's the best deck but it's the best deck by proxy as we saw with some of the results earlier the less there are of um magnamon the less numemon actually has to feed on those magnamons to become the best deck so like that's kind of where this whole cycle uh starts and even though we are complaining about Numemon, because Numemon actually is still just egregiously stupid, uh, I'm not mm -hmm. going to sit there and say it's not, but it's more okay in Japan because they're not playing Numemon as often, and yes, with more sets, there will eventually be more counters, uh, but sometimes we don't want to wait for those because it just doesn't feel good to play, and right now, to me personally, BT16 does not feel fun to play. It really doesn't. No, I, I think even in my local scene, like it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of like we'll we'll wait for UX six, we'll wait for seventeen, which I don't know if seventeen makes it much better, but seventeen doesn't. Uh, I'll I'll say that because you, you're just updating what was already good. Yeah, seventeen. Seventeen is going to be an interesting. I, I'm I'm more curious in how seventeen rolls out for the US because I know um as much as i love ancient guru fine blue. it's 18 and 19 we get in special booster in july or well, i mean july. like how our meta shapes out i think that's oh yeah, yeah 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 because there's still a lot of like play style differences because like also like each region kind of does play a little bit different even though we are all the english speaking region in quotation marks um but we each do have our own favoritisms and play styles, just like how Japan has its own favoritisms and play styles. And it does seem like uh, Japan looks at the West and is just like, it sounds like that Digimon's catering already more towards them, uh, which was an interesting perspective to learn after uh, hearing East talk about his experience uh, on mm -hmm. his side of the world. So that's why I think like, these unification sets, they really have to not suck. Uh, one, like the special boosters yeah. have to not be bad. And two, post unification, I do think Bandai has a lot to improve on between the tournament scene, set design going forward, um, mm -hmm. putting us on parity with Japan in terms of uh, listening to our feedback in bans and restrictions because. I do know that Bandai mostly does listen to Japan when it comes to their feedback because they, they got everything first. So it makes sense to actually listen to them and try to improve it for us. Um, yeah, I know. I agree with that. So all in all, interesting stuff. For um, sure. So I think we kind of uh, hit all of the, the nails that we kind of needed Absolutely. to. So any so. uh any closing statements uh Risu? Uh we should have definitely gotten a Kendo Gururumon in BT18 and I'm really sad we didn't. We didn't. 
No, we did, did not get a did Kendo we get a Bernie? BT. We didn't get a Burning. We didn't get an Aldo. We didn't get a Bayo. And I'm really, really sad about it. Uh, there's always another set. There's I always so. the next set. <laughs> <laughs> ideally, ideally, as long as they don't kill the game. Uh, Digimon doesn't look like... I guess my ending closing statement is... Even mm -hmm. if Unification's rocky, right now, Digimon doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It still seems like it's one of the better games on the market. It's, in my perspective, the best game on the market. Uh, sure, Bandai might be doing some silly things here and there, but that's just Bandai being Bandai. Uh, what yeah. company doesn't do silly things, to be honest? Uh, no, no, you, you got a point. Yeah. Um. No, I agree. So... All we have to do is just bide our time, hope things get better for the current meta, and uh, try to be cordial and nice about it. And the next set is just around the corner, so hopefully things can only get better. And Unification is only about six to eight months away, which might seem like a lot of time, but realistically it's not. And it'll be interesting to see how everything develops. So with that, I want to thank everyone for listening all the way to the end. Risu, thank you for coming on again. It's fun. I've been, I've been, uh, I enjoy it. This is cool. And with that, we will see you all uh, later.